How to use multiple intelligence in the classroom. As we know, multiple intelligence theory was devised by Howard Gardner and consists of eight intelligences that interact with each other in all humans, resulting in a unique combination that we don't even see in twins. One of the great contributions of multiple intelligences is that everybody's intelligent in one way or another. Contrary to how it was thought, it's a biopsychosocial potential that will be activated based on the experiences from birth. From an educational point of view, this has a great impact because depending upon what we do in the classroom, we'll either enhance or not the different intelligences. It's important to make a note that when we talk about fostering the multiple intelligences, we don't mean we have to make geniuses out of all of our students but we need to offer them the opportunity to learn from the different intelligences. If we always raise the same type of activity, we'll be leaving out many of our students and they can't reach the established goal because we don't use all of the intelligences. What do you think? Do you want to know how we can go on to strengthen and secure multiple intelligences in the classroom? Let's take a look. How can we use musical intelligence in the classroom? To use musical intelligence, we can do different types of activities, for example, environmental and instrumental sounds, musical composition and performance, percussion, rap, rhythmic patterns. Also, we can make use of more activities like singing, humming, musical collage. And of course, we can use technology to support other resources. Basically, activities that use music or sound form the basis of musical intelligence. Now let's think about mathematical logical intelligence. How can we use it? Some of the activities that we can think about in the classroom to stimulate and work this intelligence are the use of abstract symbols, such as formulas, calculations, decoding codes, creating significant connections between incoherent ideas, using graphic organisers or logic patterns like using puzzles, games, making sequences or numerical patterns, inventing a logical explanation point by point, solving problems, using logic, scientific methods. In short, all of those which were able to use logical and mathematical reasoning. How can we use linguistic intelligence? Some of the activities that we can use in the classroom are to use a diary or an agenda, write creatively, write poetry, read, debate, learn new words and practice them. And now let's have a look at the next one. The use of naturalist intelligence in the classroom. Naturalist intelligence was one of the last ones that Gardner incorporated into his theory, but it's no less important. To promote this intelligence, we can use resources that involve, for example, classifying objects, categorising, comparing, everything related to the environment, and a way to think related to the explanation of natural phenomena and observation of nature, such as doing outdoor activities, working on recognising relationships, and, of course, using the technological resources to support the rest. How can we apply spatial intelligence? To stimulate spatial intelligence, we can use the following resources. Active imagination, to find connections between visual designs and experiences or knowledge. Colour, textures, associate colours and textures with concepts, ideas or processes. We can draw by creating graphs representing concepts, ideas or processes being studied for example using flow diagrams or illustrations. We can use guided visualisation by creating mental images of concepts, ideas or processes. We can use mental maps 
creating concept maps with information. We can use collage by designing a collection of images to show different aspects of dimensions of an idea, a concept or a process. We can use talking walls or paper, creating spaces, murals and posters. We can paint, using paints or colour to express the understanding of ideas, concepts or processes. Let's now think about how we can use bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence is about using the body as a tool to think and learn. The resources we can use are related to body language, making for example body sculpture that allows ordering a group of people to express an idea, concept or process. Also dramatic represent representation, creative folk dance, gymnastic routines, a graphic human to create a continuous line. On one side those who agree and on the other side those who disagree to express the understanding of a concept, idea or process. Role play, mime, cultural outings, sporting games all represent how we can use bodily kinesthetic intelligence. How can we apply interpersonal intelligence? Relationships between people are important for learning. Therefore, to stimulate this intelligence, we can do activities related to collaborative skills, cooperative learning, empathy, learning to give feedback, making group projects, or using the other person's feelings, working with puzzles, using person-to-person -person communication, and the motivations of others. So we, in this way, we can promote interpersonal relationships and social and emotional competence. And finally, how can we apply intrapersonal intelligence? Knowing oneself and have, having space to think is one of the bases of this intelligence. You can use resources like learning to change your own mood to reach an optimal state, recognise what to study, develop concentration skills or higher order of reasoning, leaving space to work alone and express feelings and thoughts about something, as well as to find the implications or applications of the topics learnt in the classroom for each person's personal life. Reflecting on one's thinking and methods of reflection, such as journals, personal diaries, and learning what patterns of thinking to use for each task.